Welcome to Blue Talks. So my friends, if you could imagine having anything in your life in your business, your career, love, health, relationships. What would it be? I really want you to think about that. And hold on to that thought. Now, if there's an area of your life that's not how you imagined it to be, I ask you why. Why is that? And so today I'm going to share with you my story with the hopes of inspiring you to light a fire within you so that you too can live your best life. I was 44 and feeling lost. On the outside, I looked like I had it all. I had a great job, I made great money, I drove a nice car, I dressed well, I was in great shape. But on the inside, I was in turmoil. Life wasn't how I imagined it to be. I had issues with my relationship and money. The gym was my coping strategy. It was the place where I would go. I felt empowered when I was there. I felt strength, connected to my mind and body. And growing up, I've always felt strongly connected to my intuition. You have it, I have it, we all have it. You know, it's that strong nudge that inner gut deep feeling or that thought it's like a muscle the more attention we pay to it the stronger it gets yet most of us don't use it we ignore it because our outer voice our ego trumps louder most of the time and typically i was no different i wasn't listening to my intuition until I was stopped in my tracks. And I remember the morning that my whole life changed. I remember it like it happened yesterday. I rolled out of bed to hit the gym and I heard a loud pop. Within seconds, I had sharp shooting pain in my lower back that coursed down my legs and my legs went numb. And I fell to my knees. I managed to crawl to the bathroom on my hands and knees. And I tried to stand and I couldn't. My body felt heavy. The pain was like torture. It was intense. And I didn't know what was happening to me. I couldn't make sense of it. And I tried to stand up again, and I couldn't do it. I laid on the bathroom floor, crying and sobbing, praying to God to take the pain away. So I was taken to the ER, where I had x-rays done. And the x-rays showed nothing. But I knew my back didn't feel right. And months before I had been involved in a car accident, I was rear-ended while I was driving. And I had noticed gradual changes in my back, but I was managing. And so I pressed further, asking for an MRI. An MRI was done, and it showed that I had massive back injury. It showed that I had torn discs, and fractured vertebrae at the base of my spine. 
So being such an active person, it was such a life-altering blow. And after months of no improvement, I hit a wall. I was so tired and frustrated and angry. I was so angry at the world. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what to do. I was so desperate to regain my health. And at the time of my back injury, to make matters worse, my second marriage was in a constant state of chaos. I was an emotional wreck. So I turned to alcohol to numb the pain. I binge drank every weekend. Fear was running the show. I was not in control of my life anymore. I was a victim of my own life. Turning to faith, I've always been believed that things happen for a reason. And so I started praying more, asking for a sign, asking, asking God for clarity to help me make sense of what this all really meant. And so one day when I was sitting quietly, my whole body shook. Typically I would ignore these Signs, these urges, this, this crazy thing, right? Typically I would ignore it, but this time it was so strong I couldn't. It had my attention. I, I had to stop and pay attention. And I heard the words inside out. And then I heard that if I was willing and willing to listen and do the work, that my body and my back and my life would heal. And then I was told to look up trauma and emotions, and so I did. And I couldn't believe what I was reading. I read that when emotions become trapped in our bodies, that they can cause physical symptoms and dis-ease. And left trapped long enough, they can cause changes at a cellular level, and cause disease. Well, being a person who loves science, I was like, wow, this resonated so deeply with me. It made so much sense. And the more that I read, I realized that I had trauma and emotions that were blocking my healing. I knew with every fiber of my being that this was the answer to my prayers. And it was at that moment that fitness became an inside job. I was at my lowest moment, my bottom, and I was so ready to figure this out. And that's what it took for my healing journey to begin. So looking back, I've always struggled with relationships, especially with men. I would let people control me. I would let people hurt me, push me around. I would always just hope that it would stop, but it never did. And, you know, I always, I ignored the signs. And after years of experiencing physical, mental, and verbal abuse, it left me feeling deeply inadequate. And so I read whatever I could about physical and emotional trauma, self-help and back injuries. I read it all. And I couldn't believe, as I read more, I was like, oh my gosh, how could I, I have not realized this? I was so focused on my back pain that I'd forgotten what it was like to be happy. And I was attracting more negativity in my life because that's the vibe I was putting out. Like attracts like. What I was focusing on was expanding. I was stuck in a negative vortex. I was a victim of my own making. Allowing life 
to control me instead of me being in control of my life. And I gave away my power often. I gave away my power when I allowed people to hurt me, when I didn't speak my truth or speak my mind, when I would people please, try to fix situations, and when I didn't take responsibility for my life, giving away my power robbed me of my mental strength. Until I realized that I had a choice. I could choose to either be consumed by fear or I could take responsibility and live the way that I really wanted to live my life. And so I made a commitment. I made a commitment to myself to finally heal my traumas once and for all. I was ready for change. I was ready to get back in the driver's seat. I was ready to let go of my excuses. I was ready to take responsibility. I was ready to take my power back. Now being a typical teen, I craved freedom. But I experienced the exact opposite. I felt quite restricted and suffocated at home. I remember a very traumatic event. Um, my dad pulled me down the stairs by my hair. And another time, when I was about a half an hour late past curfew, and I got home, and the door was locked. And my dad met me at the door with a black garbage bag. And he said to me, if you're not willing to listen and stick to my rules, you might as well leave. I'll never forget the fear that I felt or the strength that I had that I didn't even know existed in me. And I grabbed that black bag and I walked away. I left home when I was 15. So music and writing became my thing. Never Surrender, inspired by Corey Hart, became my daily mantra. And I finished high school with a strong determination to make something of my life, to become somebody. And I desired to pursue a career in healthcare. So I left my small town and started post-secondary school. Well, about a year and a half later, the universe had a different plan. I gave birth to the most gorgeous, beautiful baby girl. I became a young mom at the age of 20. So growing up in Catholic faith, her father and I did what we thought was right. And we got married. After a few years of an unhealthy relationship, I ended the marriage. And so, once again, I was feeling overwhelmed and lost, full of despair. And so I dug deep into really trying to understand these thoughts, behaviors, and actions that were showing up for me. I tried to really understand what it was that was happening and, and going on in my life. So I started tuning into my heart instead of my head. And I started turning inward instead of outward, looking for answers. And I prayed so much. I prayed so much. You know, I call on this higher power. 
call it God, universe, spirit, whatever resonates with you. But it was something bigger than me. And I prayed to give me strength to help me and to keep, help me keep going. And I realized that I have been abandoning myself. I have been looking for answers my whole life, but through all of my experiences, looking for love and acceptance in all the wrong places, when what I really needed to do was to go within and love myself first, to truly love myself. And I knew that all of these experiences were meant for me to heal this pattern once and for all. The pattern that had started when I was a kid and continued into my adulthood and that kept repeating. So this was meant for me to stop that, to heal it once and for all. And so I started practicing, channeling my thoughts to see my body healthy, whole, and complete. I would envision my body already healed and my pain gone. And I practiced daily affirmations, positive affirmations, self-love affirmations. And I would say things to myself like, I love myself. I am good enough. I am strong enough. I am confident. I am beautiful enough. And I would repeat these to form those new healthy thoughts and, and behaviors. And you know what? The instant I started doing the work, an incredible shift happened. I had a more positive outlook on life than I had in years. And instead of being angry at myself, I was so grateful to be alive. And instead of focusing on my pain, I focused on the gift of movement. And instead of being hard on myself, I channeled that into determination. I gained clarity on who I was and what I wanted to be. I my power grew stronger. And physically, my pain became less. Self-love was the way through to my healing. I finally, for the first time in my life, really, really, truly loved myself. All parts of me including my flaws too. Now things in life tend to come full circle, don't they? Having no real male role model for many years, I was so devastated when my dad died suddenly from cancer, I was 35. The day that he died, I sat on his hospital bed and we cried and I cried for the times we wouldn't get back cried for the things that were left unsaid we were both too stubborn and too proud to admit our faults and now it was too late and when he left I was once again feeling overwhelmed with despair and loss. And so the gym became my coping strategy. The gym became where I needed to go. And I felt so strong and connected when I was there. I felt connected to my dad when I was there. I cried through so many workouts. I now know that my dad didn't mean to hurt me. He just didn't know another way. If he knew better, he would have done better. 
We must forgive those who hurt us. If we don't, the pain will hold us captive. Forgiveness and compassion freed me. As I embraced my pain and learned to let go, I opened up my heart for more love. Let love be your compass. My heart was leading me in the direction that I needed to go. My intuition was guiding me in the right direction to help me heal my life and my back. Our intuition is always there for us, to help us. We just need to learn to listen to it. Our bodies are always sending us messages. As I listened to my body's messages, I started to heal. And I healed from the inside out. My three beautiful children have been my driving force, my inspiration. And I'm happy to say that I've fully recovered. And my intuition always tells me as well, I've been gifted with the knowing now when my back is feeling off, that it's time to come back into alignment. And so, my friends, I ask you, if there's anything in your life that you could imagine having, anything in your life with health, money, relationships, business, career, that thought you had earlier, the question I asked, those are your seeds. You've planted those seeds. Those are your dreams. They are meant for you. They are meant for you. Now, if there's an area of your life that's not how you imagined it to be, Guess what? You can change it. The power is within you. You get to decide. All situations have a positive influence on us if we're willing to accept the wisdom from it. When you're willing to go within and face it, to do the work. You're already on the path of victory. So I ask you to rise. Step into your greatness. Step into the fire with me. Thank you. Thank you.